All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the software indicators and algorithms and other tools um, uh, event. This is going to be a huge event uh, where we un um, literally reveal some of the traders and some of the best indicators that they use and also some companies that will present some of their technology that is actually meant to help traders in many ways. So good morning and welcome everyone. This event is brought to you by Timing Research and Trade Out Loud. The event is being recorded and all the recordings will be available as soon as they're processed on the timingresearch.com website and also on the Timing Research YouTube page. David Kostmetter and I, Anka Metcalf, will be your host today. So if you should have any questions directed to us, please feel free to reach out. So before we begin, we want to remind you that all information provided today is for educational purpose only, should not be construed as investment advice regarding the purchase or sale of securities, options, futures, forex, or any instrument of any kind. I'm pretty sure you know by now that trading involves a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors because you could lose money. So before deciding to trade, you should carefully consider your objectives, your level of experience, and your risk appetite. Individual performance depends upon each person's skills, time, commitment, and effort. Results may not be typical, and individual results will vary. So you must do your own research and make your own trading decision. And with us today, we have Valerie Fox that will take us into uh, naked charts, which I love very much. Valerie, you have the mic. Take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, hello, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending upon where you are in the world and also what time you might be watching the recording if you're not live. Um, but, you know, I'm kind of going against the grain here. I know the topic of the overall event is about technology and, you know, using software and indicators and algorithms, but I'm going to kind of go against the grain and talk about some naked chart trading. I'm a big advocate of price action and really simplifying what it is we all can see on the charts. And so I'm going to be sharing some of my um, go-to methodologies for analyzing the charts with you today. So thank you for joining me. Uh, for those of you that don't know who I am or aren't familiar with my background. You know, I've been trade, I'm a Forex trader, but I've been supporting traders around the globe for years. Um, and I also, <clears throat> excuse me, recently published a book. So I'll kind of give you guys a little bit insight on that, but I'm really happy to be here today and I'm excited to have all of you here live. I will be engaging you all a little bit in chat. So if you're not already on the chat window, make sure you switch your chat to everyone. We'll get a little bit of engagement here. And similar to what Anka just said, you know, obviously this presentation is for educational purposes. I'm not going to read through this whole thing because it's very similar to what Anka just said, but just know that, you know, uh, ultimately you're responsible for your own results. And I'm trying to share some information here, but take it into account with your experience as well. So let's dive into the agenda for today. What I'm gonna be covering in this presentation are a few trading success variables, just to kind of get us thinking big picture. Then I'm gonna dive into the components of a trading strategy and really, um, you know, try to just explain where indicators and price action trading and algorithmic trading fit into the big picture of trading uh, in terms of a specific strategy. And then we'll dive deep into how to actually read naked charts. I'll talk about determining the trend, identifying your entry zones, and waiting for price confirmation and what all of those are, along with many examples. Then I'll round out the presentation with just sharing with you what I believe to be the four stages of trading. And hopefully there will be a little bit of time at the end for Q&A as well. So let's dive in. Um, again, I want to thank you all for being here, whether you're live or watching the recording. As mentioned, I'm just briefly going to touch on this. I just published my new book, The Self-Reliant Trader Method. Ultimately, it's for any trader, new or experienced, that wants better results. So inside the book, I show you um, basically how to build and optimize your own trading strategy and to get better results over time with the strategies you're using. So as a thank you for being here, if you use the link below, not only will you get the PDF version, but you'll also get the um, free audiobook 
version of the book. It's only $5. There's a wealth of information. Feel free to check it out. No pressure at all. But for being here today with me or in the recording with me, I am going to give you that free professionally narrated audiobook. So feel free to check it out at tradefocus.com forward slash book. All right, so let's dive in. Trading success variables. So when we talk about trading success in general, I really classify overall success in trading into three buckets, which are what I would consider to be equal buckets of knowledge, discipline, and mindset. If you think about knowledge, knowledge is really, you know, understanding brokers and platforms, uh, understanding the market you're trading, uh, having a trading strategy that's documented, understanding how to place orders and um, all the different components of a trade plan like entries and exits and risk mitigation and uh, trade management protocols. But really there's this whole like knowledge bucket that has to be explored and discovered to become a trader. And obviously when you're new, that learning curve is quite steep. And once you've been trading for a while, you know, you your knowledge bucket is pretty full, but can continue to grow and um, advance over time. So I'm just kind of curious how many of you here, again, using the chat box, I wanna make this a little bit interactive, would consider yourself, um, let's just say a beginner in the knowledge bucket or experienced. So type it in the chat box, beginner or experienced. Let's see what people have to say. I know we've got some people on the line live. Okay, I'd love to just get a, an, an overall idea here of the experience level on the call. So we've got Neil's experience, B Norma's beginner, Jurgen's a bit experienced. Okay, so I mean, even in the first initial few responses, we have quite a variety, right? Which is pretty true for trading groups like this. You'll have people who are brand new to trading, just trying to get some information. You'll have people who are experienced trying to level up, right? So knowledge is the first bucket, this, and I, there's been a, many more coming in too. So a little experience, novice, great. Thank you guys. The second bucket in gray is discipline. So this is really about implementing a trading strategy, holding yourself accountable to following a trading strategy, showing up at your charts every day, really treating trading more like a business and less like a hobby. So um, discipline is the second court category. And then the third one is mindset, or think about this as like trading psychology, really managing your emotions, um, feeding your thoughts and beliefs with positive and possibility. And there's a big component to mindset with trading that's often undervalued. But these are the three areas that I think are really important for trading success. When we talk about price action and analyzing charts and even algorithms and indicators, really that goes into your actual trading strategy, which is part of the knowledge bucket and part of the discipline bucket. And when we dive in deeper into what's included in a trading strategy, I would consider there to be four buckets. The first one is the logistics. What are you trading? What type of trader are you? Are you a swing trader? Are you a scalper? Are you a day trader? Are you, do you trade the stock market? Do you trade Forex? Do you trade futures or options? So there's all these little logistics. What time of day are you trading? How often do you need to check your charts? Are you sitting down for just two hours straight and then you're done? Or do you just check your charts in the morning and the afternoon and it takes five minutes? So there's like all these little logistical components of your trading strategy. The second one, the second component is risk mitigation. So, you know, traders are really just risk mitigators when it all comes down to it. If, if you know, in my opinion, if you're doing a great job of trading, you really have to have proper risk mitigation, not only with how you're managing your each trade, but the risk you're putting on the line for each trade with correlated instruments or indices or um, industries. Uh, also, you know, how much max risk are you willing to take on? So there's this whole risk mitigation plan that I refer to in what I call as a trade plan that needs to be thought out and um, documented in advance and ultimately followed when you're actually trading so that you don't get yourself in a situation where you're losing more money than you're willing to lose or where you're um, experiencing a drawdown more extreme than you have a risk appetite for. 
So risk mitigation is the second bucket. The third bucket is finding an edge. And this is really about qualifying trades. And this is kind of the brunt of the focal area that I'm gonna be talking about today. So I'm gonna be talking about price action using naked charts as it relates to finding an edge for trades. Um, trading is all about just probabilities over time. There's never any guarantee. No one can predict where price is going to go. If they could, they'd be, you know, a million billionaire. <laughs> so really trading just kind of big picture is about finding an edge. So today my goal is to give you some wisdom around price action trading and just looking at some naked charts and identifying some really easy ways to find an edge. Then after you find that edge, you have the fourth bucket, which is all about trade management. You know, where are you going to enter? Where are you going to exit? How are you going to, to reduce risk as the trade moves in your favor? How are you going to lock in profit as the trade moves in your favor? Where's your ultimate profit target? Things of that nature. So, um, you know, again, I'm not going to go into great detail on trade management today. I'm really going to be focusing on this finding an edge and how you can use naked charts to do that. Okay, so let's head over to some naked charts and see what your experience and comfort levels. So again, if you just hopped on, I'm gonna be using the chat feature. Feel free to change your chat to say everyone. But the first question is here, I have a naked chart. This is the Aussie dollar, Canadian dollar on a four hour chart. Um, this chart is a candlestick chart and can be applied to stocks, futures, options, anything. So don't get held up if you're not a Forex trader know that this is the same information that's on any type of candlestick chart. Ultimately, um, how many of you would feel comfortable to make trades on this naked chart? Give me a yes or a no in the chat box. Would you feel comfortable to trade on this naked chart with no other information? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, okay, a lot more than I expected. I'm gonna give it another second here, see if we get any no's, several yeses, okay. Super interesting. So many of you, yes, are comfortable reading naked charts. So we'll see if I can impart some new wisdom into you today on a chart. Okay, there's a no. Thank you, Jurgen, for being honest about that. I was kind of wondering if maybe the no's would just not want to say anything, but we do have a couple of no's coming through now. Okay. So again, varying levels of experience. I'm going to just kind of make some assumptions here that you guys know nothing. So I'm just gonna share some basics about reading naked charts and what you're really looking at here. So first and foremost, each individual candle contains a lot of information. So on a single candle, let me grab my pen here. Oops. Let's see if I can get my little drawing pen. Okay, so if we look at like just a single candle, in a single candle, you have four data points. You have the open price in this case on a green candle. Uh, some of you do black and red candles. I really like green and red. It's just more intuitive for my eyes. Um, but regardless, the information is all the same. So we have the open price, which is here on this candle. We have the low. So at some point in this four hour period, since I'm on a four hour chart, price went all the way down to here, the low or the lower wick. Price at one point in the four hour period went all the way up to here, the upper wick, and then it eventually closed here. So there's four data points contained in every single candle. So when you look at an individual candle, you can tell one of two things. Let me erase that. So you can easily tell if the candle is bullish or bearish. So this one that I have notated here, is this a bullish or a bearish candle? Meaning, is there more buying pressure or more selling pressure on this single individual candle right here? Let's see what you guys think. Bullish, bearish, buying or selling pressure. So there's more buying pressure. Exactly, Bill, thank you. So this is a, a candle that opened here, closed here, ultimately all the buyers and sellers battled for four hours on this candle and they were able to successfully drive price up to here. Um, so there's more buying pressure on that candle. 
Now let's go to a different candle. Let's look at this candle right here. Price opened here, at one point went up to here. Uh, there's really not, not much of a lower wick, but it, then it closed here. So opened here, closed here. Is there more buying or selling pressure on this candle? Very bearish selling pressure, exactly. So the sellers outnumbered the buyers here where they were able to successfully drive price down. So those are just individual candles you could look at and you could literally go across the entire chart and say, okay, the buyers, you know, the buyers are driving price up, the sellers are driving price down. So ultimately the individual candles alone are a piece of information. Then you have things like this that happen where you start combining a couple of candles. You've got this green candle up and then you have a red candle down. So what do you think that means when it happens? where basically price changes directions. Indecision, exactly, Bill. So there's some indecision that's happening and Jurgen, exactly, it's a turning point in the buyer and seller balance. These are called support supply and demand zones, support and resistance zones. Um, ultimately, uh, you could call them respect zones where price is, uh, you know, drawn up to it and then reverses, reversal points. So there's a lot of different ways that you can call that, but it is meaningful when you see that happen. And price traditionally doesn't move in a straight line anywhere. It's going up and down. If you just follow the green and the red candles, it's just going up and down time and time again on the charts. It's not just Typically, I mean, typically you don't see a big just straight up. Eventually you'll see a pullback and then it will continue. So price moves in waves, which is important to note um, because even in an uptrend, even in an uptrend, you can have pullbacks and even in a downtrend, you can have pullbacks up. But uh, there's some really cool things that you can decipher from candlestick charts as you start to consolidate and combine the candle action across many candles. And that's what we're gonna dive into uh, now. So the first thing is determining the trend. So um, the, the cool thing about trend is a lot of people say to trade with the trend, which is great. Uh, I'm an advocate of trading with the trend myself with my own trading. But also you can use the trend or knowledge about the overall trend to have a couple different pathways for your trade management. So for example, maybe you're, you say, you draw a line in the sand as part of your trading strategy. I only trade with the trend, right? So then you would be developing your trading bias based on the current charts trends. Another option to use trend as an insightful piece of information would be when I'm trading with the trend, I use this trade management protocol where you're maybe looking for higher profits, but maybe you're okay to trade against the trend, but you just look to lock in your profits earlier. So there's a couple of different ways you can use trend to your benefit in either identifying an edge or a trading bias or using it to tailor your trade management approach in a specific trade. But let's talk about how you identify the trend. So we've got the uptrend, um, which for me, you know, on naked charts, I define as you're getting higher highs and higher lows. Here's what that looks like. So ultimately, the highs or the swing highs are going higher. And the swing lows here across the bottom are also going higher. So you're getting higher highs and higher lows. A downtrend I define as lower highs and lower lows. So ultimately that looks like this if we just kind of generalize a chart here. So your highs are going lower, they're going down, and your lows are also going lower. So this is a very simple way to identify trend. Of course, there's a million ways you can identify trend using indicators and letting your algorithm pick it out and all that stuff. But if we're just gonna talk about simple pure price action, this is how I do that. And I'll show, we'll go back to that screenshot of the charts in here in just a moment. Um, and then there's another 
you know, trend scenario, which is ranging or just completely mixed and unable to define a trend. And that's where you really kind of have those inconsistent highs and lows. So um, it could look like a little bit of consolidation where, you know, your highs are going lower, your lows are going higher. So it doesn't meet either of these two definitions. So it's going to be ranging or mixed because you're just getting some consolidation probably before a breakout one way or the other. Alternatively, maybe you're, you get like a higher high, but then you get a lower low. And it's just like kind of in this, you know, weird thing where first your highs are going higher, then your highs are going lower. First your lows are going higher. And then, um, you know, you kind of get all these weird signals. Sometimes it's indecipherable, in which case don't try to classify it as uptrend or downtrend. Uptrend or downtrend should be very easy to spot. You know, that's a downtrend. This is an uptrend, okay? Highs are going higher, highs are going lower. Lows are going, lows are going lower, lows are, highs are going lower. If you talk too fast, you can really get tripped up in those. Okay, so let's look at this on the chart. Going to be asking for some chats here. So get your, your fingers ready. All right. Is this right here an uptrend or a downtrend? I kind of cheated because I draw the lines. But we'll start with an easy one. Uptrend. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, now, um, what is this? Uptrend or downtrend? Awesome, down, down, down. You guys are killing it with your trend analysis here. All right, what about um, this in here? What kind of trend is that? Consolidation, sideways, exactly. So this is mixed, this is not really a trend. Okay, and then what about this? Uptrend, downtrend, or mixed? Down, exactly. So when you kind of really just scale back being able to identify the trend, it's quite easy. And this can be done on any chart, right? Again, I'm on a Forex chart, that's a four hour chart. You can do this on stocks, indices, options. You can do this on a 15 minute chart. You can do this on a monthly chart. The only thing that changes is the price of the instrument they're showing and the duration of the candles, right? So on this chart, it's a four hour chart, which means each candle is worth the price movement of four hour periods of time. If I were on a 15 minute chart, each of these candles would be worth 15 minutes of price movement. So this is applicable to any type of trading and any time frame of charts. So don't get held up because I'm um, doing four hour charts in a lot of my screenshots. Okay, so let's go to the next part. So you guys are really great with trends, uh, super easy. The next thing that I want to layer in with our price action analysis uh, are identifying your entry zones. So these are ultimately supply and demand changes, uh, also known as support and resistance or historical reversal points. So what I mean by this is, let's say we're in an uptrend, okay? We're getting higher highs and higher lows, okay? Price is here right now. So that's where price is right now. If I was going to be looking for the trend to continue up, maybe I'm a trend trader and I say, I'm only going to trade when in an uptrend, I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna be looking for buying opportunities. So we don't know where price is gonna go, but if it were to pull back, when you look left, this is a really interesting prior resistance where price went up, changed directions. So this would also be a really fascinating entry zone to keep an eye on. Maybe it will hold, maybe it won't, right? We never know, it's all about probabilities, but if I were to look to find an edge for an entry zone to buy in support of this higher time frame trend, I would go from the current point, look left, you know, and maybe price earlier looked something like this, you know, so you have a prior support, a prior resistance. Heck yeah, when price comes back, 
down here, I'm going to be keeping an eye on what it does. That would be like potentially waiting for price to bounce from that point. Okay. Um, and don't mind my <laughs> drawings here, but let me just show you kind of a, another example here with a downtrend. So if price is right here, and I want to continue on the downtrend, so I have a sell bias, price isn't going to just go down forever. It's eventually going to pull back. I don't know when, but I can keep an eye out for it, right? We're not in the prediction business. We're just going to wait and see what happens with price action analysis. So it starts to pull back. And when it gets here, I'm looking left and I'm like, whoa, I see this prior support or supply and demand reversal change. And I see this one, which is pretty close to it as well. That looks appealing. So then I'd kind of be keeping an eye for what's happening here for potential entry to go down. Now, the third component I'm going to show you in a second helps you kind of uh, hone in on some ways to get confirmation before you enter. Um, I'm a very conservative trader myself. I like to wait for additional confirmation instead of just entering when price gets here. I want to see something specific happen here before I enter, and I'll get into that in a second. So those are some just kind of high level conceptual examples. Let's look at this on the charts, right? So um, let's hone in on this downtrend right here. So price was moving down, making lower lows, lower highs, moving down, price starts to pull up. So this is obviously hindsight, but as price is pulling up, if you look left, what do you see? Boom, right there. And for these entry zones, I, I really like to hone in on the necklines. So again, we're going down, price starts pulling up right here. So it's gonna pull back somewhere or it might change directions. Of course, we never know but we have a, a meaningful downtrend here. If I look left, I see this right here where price previously reversed. And if you were to draw a line on your chart, again, I don't use the wicks for this. I actually use the bodies. Um, so if I were to draw this line across here, this would be my kind of entry zone that I'd be paying attention to. Um, to potentially sell and continue down with the trend. So basically at this point, I see this green candle coming up. This is obviously all hindsight, right? I see this green candle. I'm like, okay, let's see if it pulls up to this. When it does, then I'll be looking for step three, which I'll show you in a moment. But um, that's kind of how I would identify entry zones. And then basically let's do um, an uptrend here. So uh, we don't have a super great uptrend that gets established. So here, price was going down. It rotates up with a higher high, pulls back a little bit. That's not really a downtrend for me, but then you get this pullback. So now we're officially in an uptrend here. With how we look at trend, we have a, our highs are going higher. Our lows are going higher. Um, so then we get a third higher high. When price pulls back, um, you know, first there's this one, which it pulled back to, and you kind of got a little reaction there, which you may have been able to squeeze some pips out of. But from here, then, you know, here's another zone where you got some reaction, right? And um, maybe there would be some trades in there. And then ultimately price uh, almost comes down to this level. It doesn't quite make the cut. So that wouldn't have triggered any trades, but there were several uh, areas here, at least in the screenshot that you were getting some reactions that could have been trade possibilities. So now let's talk about the third component. And obviously if you do these downtrends over here, there's plenty of opportunities. So price is going down. Um, it starts to pull back up. We've got this one, which aligns with this one. I mean, if you just look left, you'll see these zones respected time and time again. Let me actually change my pen to blue. So it doesn't, um... so you had this first pullback and then price pulled back here. And, you know, there's all these areas here that were prior resistance. Price pulls back to that area again. 
where you had some sell opportunities to continue going down. Okay, let's keep moving because I'm going to pull it all together. And it seems like a lot of you, at least on the call live, had some oops um, experience. So this probably isn't new for some of you. The third step that I do is I wait for what I call price confirmation. And there's a couple different things you can do to get price confirmation. For this presentation, I'm going to keep it simple and just focus on what I call reversal candle sequences. So again, so far we've talked about identifying a trend, which is gonna give you your trading bias, and then looking for entry zones, which are basically prior support and, support and resistance. And then the last thing is waiting for some reversal candle sequences, okay? So I'm gonna quickly go through, there's five of them that I like to monitor. Um, the first one is the pin bar. So if you're in an uptrend, or if price is moving here. So if we're in a downtrend, price starts to come up to this prior support and resistance zone. If price is temporarily moving up to a zone, okay, a pin bar is basically where you have the body with a longer wick on top. So when I see a downtrend, with price pulling back up to a prior support or resistance level. And then I get a pin bar. This is my confirmation that I have a higher edge for price to continue down. So again, I don't just sell when price gets up to this level. I let price on whatever chart I am, if this is a five minute chart, I let this candle complete and I wait to see if it gives me one of the five candles I'm about to share with you, one of them being a pin bar. So when price is going up, has a long tail up top, basically kind of making an arrow, if you envision that, um, then that's one of my signals that, okay, this level has a higher likelihood than not of holding. Of course, it's never guaranteed, but that's uh, an example. Let me show you what it looks like so if we're in an uptrend, price is pulling back to a prior support or resistance, you know, whether it's this one or this one, it doesn't matter, but let's say it pulls back and then it gives me a pin bar with a long tail like this. It can be a red or a green candle, it doesn't matter, but this is the pin bar signal with the tail on the bottom, again, looking like an arrow to go up for me to enter into a buy order to continue on. So those are pin bars um, in both directions for a visual. That's the first candle. These, you could only trade pin bars and do very well. These show up all the time on the charts. How many of you have ever traded with pin bar candles in some component of your trade plan? Give me a yes or no, just kind of curious. No, yes, no, yes. So kind of a mixed bag, traded in the past. Okay, cool. So pin bars are great candles. It's one of the reversal candle sequences. Um, just to kind of quickly show you a pin bar going back to the screenshot here. So let me just show you some pin bars here for sake of kind of showing it to you actually on the chart. Do, do, do. So price was moving up here and then boom, there's a pin bar where you have the long wick and then price goes down. Um, here's a pin bar at support. Price was moving down. Um, you have a long wick on the bottom, which ultimately ended up driving price up a bit. Pin bars are everywhere. Here is another one at the top. Price was moving up formed a pin bar and changed directions, okay? Um, I mean, you could literally go across so many of the charts. Here's one where price was moving up just a little bit, gave you a pin bar and then boom, price falls. So you can very easily go look at your charts. Um, yeah, here's a big one right here. Thank you, Neil. Um, where price was moving down through a pin bar and then price change directions. So normally, again, I like to see these pin bars at prior support and resistance. 
So, you know, this pin bar looking left, yep, a prior reversal uh, direction. This pin bar right here, look left, yep, it's at a prior support and resistance zone. This pin bar right here, um, if you kind of use these wicks, it's the general vicinity. Um, this one right here, look left, probably have to look left a little further to find one closer up. But again, as a standalone, you can see that they actually do drive direction changes, but then layering in um, prior support and resistance by looking left, it's really, really powerful. Okay. Let's go to the second one, the spinning top. So this is um, basically looks like this in some capacity. Sometimes they can have you know a little body, but ultimately they can be red or green. Um, they can be tall ones or little baby short ones. Um, but if you think about a candle, this is an indecision candle. That's what all these reversal candle sequences are. They're showing indecision from the prior directional movement. So in this one, the upper and lower wicks are basically the same size and the wicks are much bigger in distance than the body. So kind of going back to that chart, we want to find some spinning tops. Um, here's one right here. Price was moving down. We have two long wicks, similar in size. The body is much smaller. Spinning top and then boom. Look left, we've got some wicks here to use, but then we've got this prior body where price moved up a little bit before shooting down. So this spinning top set up at prior support and resistance. Another spinning top example is, this chart's pretty small, but um, bear with me. So here's one right here, this green one. So right here, price is moving down, uh, big wicks on the top and the bottom, the body is smaller, and then look at sure enough, push price up. If I look left, um, you know, you've got some prior resistance there, prior support there prior resistance there, or sorry, resistance, resistance, support. Um, either way, this is at a meaningful level. So that feels pretty good. All right, let's go to the third one. The third one is called the inside candle. So these two were just single candle sequences. The next two are two candle sequences, okay? So the inside candle looks something like this. If price is moving up, um, we have a body, I'm not gonna do colors. And then an inside candle. So if this is the top and the bottom of the entire candle, an inside candle is some variation of the wicks and the body. Oops, ah, being inside. So they can't exceed the wicks. So if this was a green candle going up, this is you know, a red or a green candle in either direction, but either way, the wicks are inside the wicks or the entire candle. Here's another example of price going down. You might have even a spinning top and then something like this with little baby wicks. But again, the second candle is completely inside the first candle before going back up. So let's see this on the charts. Here's an inside candle right here. You have a big candle going up. The second candle is completely inside the first candle when you do the wicks. Um, here's another inside candle right here. Price is going up. I kind of covered the candle. And the second candle, the red one, is completely inside the wicks of the first candle. Here's another one right here. Price was moving up. The green candle's up. The red candle is completely inside before price drove down. Look left, boom, prior support and resistance um, several times. So these sequences happen all over the place. And in terms of trading these, you can trade one or all of them, You know, depending upon your comfort level, and what you naturally see very easily on the charts. 
The third one is an engulfing body. So again, this is a two candle sequence. And this one we're focused on the body, not the candle, okay? So we're, we're focused on the thicker part of the candle, no matter what the wicks are, just focusing on the body. So an engulfing body is like, let's say price is moving up and you have this body. Again, the wicks don't matter on this one. And this is going up green. And then you get a candle down where the body of the second candle completely engulfs the body of the first, right? So it's bigger that would be a signal of a reversal or um, resistance forming basically. And likewise going down, if we had a body going down, my drawings are getting more sloppy by the moment here. And then this candle goes up in green, but is bigger than the body of this candle, that would be an engulfing body um, at support here. So let's see what that looks like on the charts. So here's a real obvious one for these kind of stand out when the candles are real big, but you can see price was going down and then this body completely engulfs the body of the first. Here's a more subtle one at support, not quite as obvious at first glance, but price was moving down. You have the red body and then this green body completely engulfs the body of the first one. Um, there are also smaller versions that happen. Um, I mean, like here's an engulfing body right there. There's an engulfing body right there. They're everywhere. There's an engulfing body right there. So again, finding these at places where prior support and resistance happens is very easy to do. And of course, this is all in hindsight. So um, sometimes that's easier to see as you study these. And then the last one is the three bar reversal. So three bar reversal, imagine if price is moving up, you have a green candle, you have some kind of indecision candle. Maybe it's not officially a pin bar, maybe it is, it doesn't really matter. And this can be red or green in the middle. And then price ultimately moves down on the third candle. So the important thing here is that this third candle closes below the wick of the second candle. So basically price is going up and then going down over the course of three candles. Um, if you're going down here, you might have you know, a candle that looks like this and then get a little indecision candle. Um, so this could be tradable if it's a spinning top on its own, but then you might also get another candle here where as long as it closes above the wick here, you're getting that ultimate kind of rounded out confirmation with candle sequences of um, support being formed. And this is really meaningful when it happens at prior support and resistance. So let's see that on the charts. So um, here's an example right here. So this one was a pin bar on this first green candle. It was nothing with the two candle sequence. But then if you look at it as a three candle sequence, this third candle closed below the wick. So this is a three bar reversal. If we look left um, again, no major support and resistances here, but if you look left further and found some, then that could be a good entry zone to sell or buy. And then um, let's see here, here's another one right here. So we have a pin bar as a single candle, we have an inside candle as the double candle. And then for the third candle, you also get the three bar reversal here. So this um, resistance here could have provided several opportunities to potentially get in on this downward movement, okay? So um, you've seen trends on the chart. You've seen uh, goodness. We talked about candle sequences. We talked about entry zones, support and resistance. So really, you can take those and combine them. So if we just kind of look at this is the same chart we've been looking at for all this hindsight stuff, but if we look at it in real time, which is a totally different art form to look at things in real time, 
let me just erase this. If we just kind of look at what's happening right now on this chart, let's start at the top. Are we in an uptrend, downtrend, or a ranging market? Tell me in the chat box. Uptrend, downtrend, or ranging market? Down, down. Norma says uptrend. Uh, down, down. So most of you are saying downtrend. And this is where you know you can get a little picky. I mean, this is an uptrend for sure. Um, this is definitely a downtrend for me. The highs, you know, the the lows are all going lower. The highs are going lower. So this is a downtrend based on at least how I look at defining trend. Um, if you go up in the time frame, you might have more of an uptrend if you were just looking at like this, this, and this, obviously um, from that vantage point, and then this and this, highs are going higher, lows are going higher. So if you were to go up to like a daily or weekly chart, you might see a high, an uptrend, but at least on this four hour, I'm. Uh, seeing highs are going lower, lows are going lower. That's a downtrend. Now let's go to the next thing. Um, where are some entry zones, right? So on a downtrend, let's just assume I want to sell, okay? I want to find an opportunity to sell. Well, price is currently pulled back to this little area here, which has had a lot of prior reversal reversals or support and resistances previously. So this is a meaningful area to potentially sell. Well, then if we wait for the third component of a reversal candle sequence to form, um, right now we just have, you know, a big, this is the most recent, can, the green one is the most recent candle that's completed. This red one is still in progress. So we kind of have to wait and see what happens, but, um, if this were how it closes, do we have any of our five reversal candle sequences? If the current candle closes exactly as it is, give me a yes or a no. Do we have a pin bar that would drive price down? Do we have a spinning top that would drive price down? Do we have an inside candle? Do we have an engulfing body or do we have a three bar reversal? If we were just kind of looking at these candles right here, that have formed in real time. Exactly, Doug, not yet. So that's the thing with trading. Uh, oftentimes when you know the setup or the edge you're looking for, it's a waiting game. You have to just wait for it to show up because here's why I love waiting for price confirmation with the candle sequences, because we don't have to guess because we don't know if this level is gonna hold. Price might go up to this level or this level right before it it stops going up in the pullback so we can see we can let the candle action or the reversal candle sequences show us when the edge is there when we're in a downtrend with a sell bias where price has pulled back up to a prior supporter resistance and also given us candle action saying that the current resistance level might actually hold so um, that is kind of how I wanted to teach you guys to kind of put some price action components together. Hopefully it has simplified how you can look at trend, how you can look at support and resistance zones, and also how you can use reversal candle sequences to find ideal entry zones for trades. So again, this is only a piece of the puzzle with a trade plan, right? It's about how you can find those qualifications or high probability trade setups. From there, you still have to refine where are you going to enter, right? Are you going to enter at these necklines? Are you going to use a fib retracement um, or a pullback? Are you going to, you know, some people would say, hey, whatever this neckline is, after this candle closes, if you got one of your candle sequences, I would just wait for price to pull back up to it and then sell. So there's a couple different ways you can do that. And then obviously you need to have your stop or stop loss area and your target profits, how you're gonna scale out of the position and reduce risk. So all of those still need to be determined, but 
in terms of finding an edge, hopefully you got some really insightful insights here today. The last thing I'll cover is what I call the four stages of a trader's journey. And this will kind of help you see where you are along uh, what I consider to be the journey of becoming you know, a well-rounded, self-sufficient trader. So stage one is building out your personally aligned trade plan. This is actually documenting your trading plan, your logistics, your qualifications, your risk mitigation protocol, your trade management plan. How many of you have your trade plan documented? Give me a yes or a no in the chat box. So it's not just in your head, but it's actually written on paper or um, on your computer or something along those lines. So we got one yes and several no's coming through. So if that's you and, and your trade, even if you're, why on paper, Dennis says. So what I mean by paper, it doesn't have to be like printed paper or like pen and paper. I just mean it needs to be written down instead of only being in your mind. And the reason I'm a big advocate of a documented trade plan, which is a great question, by the way, is because it forces you to go through and know what you're doing before you ever enter a trade, right? So when do you need to show up at your computer? When, is your, when are your ideal trading times? What charts are you using? How much are you willing to risk on a trade? How much are you willing to risk on all active trades or correlated trades? Um, you know, what are you looking for on the charts? Are you looking for the three things we covered today? Are you looking for something else? How do you know when you have a buy setup versus a sell setup? Um, I actually go into all this detail in the book that I mentioned at the beginning, which I'll give the link again here in a moment. Um, but ultimately, when you have it written down, it means you can hold yourself accountable to it. You can make sure you're following your trade rules time and time again. And that's a big component to getting consistent results over time. Um, stage two is implementing your strategy, whether you learn it from someone else or you build it yourself or you craft it. Um, having it on paper is one thing, but implementing it and actually following it is an entirely different bag of worms or whatever the phrase is. So there's a component of like personal accountability that needs to happen with trading and discipline, like we talked about earlier, where are you able to follow your trade rules? Because again, consistent execution of your trade plan will bring about consistent results over time. And it's only by cons operating consistently over time that you can measure results in a meaningful way that allows you to go to stage three of trading, which is optimizing your profitability, right? Once you have consist a trade plan that's objective and executable, you're actually following your trade rules each and every time, not only with qualifying, but also with managing your trade, mitigating your risk, et cetera. Then from there, you can optimize your entries and exits, right? You can say, okay, what scenarios are going to make this trade plan I'm using more profitable? How can I tailor where I enter, or where I exit, or how I reduce my risk, or when I lock in my profit, right? And those are components of stage three. And then stage four is, okay, you have profitable results with what you're trading, You've taken the time to maximize how profitable your trading can be by focusing on your entries and exits over time. Now you scale your growth where you start to really either, you know, um, increase your account balance, you can trade more pairs or more instruments, you can trade more frequently, you can go up or down in your timeframes and your analysis. So there's a lot of different ways to scale your growth. But all of these stages I actually talk about in detail in my book, which again, I'll give you um, a link to in a moment, but just a quick recap of what we've covered. And then I know I'm up on time here, so I'm going a little bit faster now. So we talked about the trading success variables. We talked about the components of a trading strategy at a very high level. Uh, we talked about how to read naked charts, how to determine the trend, identify entry zones or support and resistance areas, and how you can wait for price to tell you if it's more likely than not to hold. And then we talked about the four stages of trading. So a lot of information covered today and we had a lot of great interaction. So thank you to all of you who participated in my questions along the way. And again, just thanks for being here in general. Uh, you're taking your trading education seriously and continuing to grow your knowledge, which is a huge part of trading. Um, I have a new book out, The Self-Reliant Trader Method, where I go through all four of those stages in detail. Um, and as a thank you for being here, if you use the link below, tradefocus.com forward slash book, 
you're going to also get the free professionally narrated audiobook. So for $5, you can buy this PDF of the book. I'm also going to throw in the professionally narrated audiobook files for you when you buy from my website. Um, I'd love for you to check it out, see if it's something that you think could help you, but ultimately it's about getting better results with trading by going through that four stage uh, method to becoming a self-reliant trader. So thank you guys so very much. I really appreciate you being here. I was able to catch a couple questions throughout the presentation, but um, ultimately kind of ran out of time here for any additional Q&A. Um, I'm trying to catch questions, but I don't think I have time here. So David, Anka, thank you so much. Uh, if you want to check out my website, feel free to do so, but Either way, I hope all of you gained some insightful information today that you can take and apply to your trading.